Hello world, Shelly here and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest and today I'm going to check out Bobby Brown's new gig. This is from Jones Road. It is the Face Pencil. Retails for $25 for 2.9 grams or 0.1 ounce of product. It's got 25 different shades. I've got the lightest shade. This is described as a makeup artist's dream, but simple enough for a newbie to master. Cover redness and dark spots, correct discoloration, and lighten dark circles while remaining virtually undetectable. Formulated with a clear base for no chalky undertones. So this pencil, I was watching the video that Bobby Brown posted explaining the product, and it can be everything from a spot concealer that you use in conjunction with foundation to just spot concealer you use with nothing else or as a bit of coverage like a foundation. And the way they demonstrated if you want it to behave like a foundation is to wear moisturizer underneath and then the pencil and the moisturizer will kind of combine to give you the consistency that would blend out more similar to a foundation. But her whole goal with this product is to show people how beautiful their skin can be while you can see your actual skin. So very interesting kind of a concept there. I'm going to attempt to apply it as sort of a no makeup makeup, but I have put down moisturizer. Actually, I used the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I believe she's no longer involved in this company, but uh, this product is still one of my favorites. So let's take a look at this lightest shade number one, swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from Jones Road, the Face Pencil in shade one. Second, I've got from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up is MAC Studio Fix Fluid in shade NW10. Fourth is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator in shade Fair. And last, I've got from Misha, the Perfect Cover BB Cream in shade 21. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 46-year-old face. I am going to use fingertips to apply this because that is the way they did it in the demonstration video. Like I said, I have already applied the Vitamin Enriched Face Base as sort of a moisturizer. She uses this both as foundation and concealer, so like under the eyes and, well, everywhere on the face. So I think that's, that's how I'm going to approach this. Now the moisturizer is what is supposed to give you a bit more ease of blending out the pencil, whereas it's more like a targeted spot concealer if you don't have any product underneath. So let's see. Let's just do one side first. This blends out easily, but you know, in the video where Bobbi Brown is talking about the product, she said it's not meant to be a mushy kind of a stick. So the product you put underneath it is really what's going to facilitate the blending and I feel like with the face base which is not quite as fluid as a moisturizer I feel like it's still a little bit tough not tough but you have to do a little bit of manipulation of the skin to get the product to blend out and because of that I feel like it introduces the likelihood of getting any flaking skin like you know, exfoliating yourself while you are applying your makeup, which can cause additional issues with flaking skin, which I do have some going on. I think the coverage looks really nice. It's very natural looking and it did cancel redness from one side to the other. I think on the other side of my face, I'm gonna try a little bit of my Nivea because it's a little bit more emollient and you know, there's no such thing as too much moisturizer in my world. So let's get the cat hair off of my finger. I want to just add a little bit of this. And see if this makes it a little bit less drag of the pencil. Yeah, it is definitely much easier to blend out seamlessly with a 
more emollient moisturizer. And this, of course, is the side of my face where all my sunspots are. So I'm just seeing how much I can actually cover of them. Yeah, I think it even appears that you get more coverage having that more emollient moisturizer. I think I could probably go a shade darker, but I put in a bunch of different foundations in their shade finder and every single one told me to get this lightest shade, so I did, but I do feel like it's it's probably the lightest that I could go. Let's do a little bit of concentration on these dark circles and see how this does as concealer. I really like this concept. Like this whole like look at your face, find the spots that need correction and just correct those is lovely. <laughs> I'm liking just the, the approach to this. Not that you can't do that with concealer, and that is pretty much what I do on a no makeup makeup day when I just spot conceal, but I don't know, it just, this is a nice product. I think it's, it's serving this purpose very nicely. Let's zoom in and take a look at this one. So my primary flaking areas right now are the sides of my nose and like my cheeks under my under eye, like the top part of my cheeks. And the side where I applied no Nivea, the first side, uh, that side is clinging pretty significantly to the edges of that flaking skin. And I think it was because I aggravated those flakes by having to, you know, manipulate them a lot to blend out the product where I didn't have to do so much of that, you know, manual physical manipulation of my skin on the Nivea side. So I do recommend if you have flaking skin, go in with a nice emollient moisturizer underneath this. Cause I only see a little bit of flake, you know, a little bit of the product clinging to the flakes on that side where it's doing it fairly, fairly obviously on the non Nivea side. I can still see all of my sunspots coming through, but what this has done is kind of evened out my skin tone. Like I feel like most of my redness has been covered, but it still looks very much like my skin. It, well, it just does look like my skin. I don't feel like it looks like I'm wearing makeup at all. If I couldn't see the edges of that flaking skin, I wouldn't even know I'm wearing anything. So if you don't have flaking skin, I think it's virtually undetectable, except that it improves what you've got going on. I, I like this concept. I really, really like this concept. It's, uh, I wish I had one shade darker because I feel like it's a smidge, just a smidge light on me. We'll find out when I go outside later on and take a look. Let's check the time. We've got, oh, I have to water my Boston fern. It's 12.09. Let's call it noonish so I remember what time it is. Let me put the rest of my face on. I'll be right back. Back with the Jones Road, so far so good. I can still see it on the areas where I have peeling skin, but other than that, that's the only place that it's even really visible. And I did end up setting very lightly with the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Powder. I did that after I applied cream. What did I do today? I, di I did uh, two things. I did the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Finish. Oh my gosh, it's been a minute since I used this. This is one of my favorite things on the planet. I love this stuff. It just makes your skin look so perfect and lovely. And then I used the Gel Crush from Flower Beauty for my blush, going super minimal. Then I set a tiny bit with powder because everything was just still a little too tacky for my taste. Then I used the Flower Beauty Light Illusion in Tawny for just a little bit of bronzer along my hairline. Then I did what I call my Gwen Stefani makeup look, which is basically just a neutral crease. This is blush, but I use it for my eyes. I also use it for contour, not today, but still have this mirror. So that's on my eyes. Liner is from House Labs. This is probably the first House Labs product that I feel like I can 100% get behind. Like I really, really, really enjoy this product. I haven't had great luck with their stuff. 
but the liquid liner is excellent. I have a little bit of the Cover FX. This is their Shimmer Veil shadow on, and I tapped it out so it's like very, 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 just a little bit on my lids so that there's something there. Mascara, oh, I just opened up a fresh tube with a CoverGirl Exhibitionist primer. This stuff, this is the first primer I've ever decided in terms of lash primers is actually worth it. And it's also the first one I ever used up a whole tube of. Mascara is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean, which I am very much enjoying. This is two coats of it. And my lip is, I love this line of lipsticks. It's from Maybelline. It's the, the For You or For Me. I always forget which one it is. But that line that they put out that's got like seven different shades of colors that they have tested on something like 90 different skin tone variations and so they're like universally flattering this is the ruby for me you know it's the gwen stefani look red lip simple eye dark liner yeah so that is what i've got going on right here so far so good with the jones road loving the concept of it and i will come back in a bit with a daylight check-in and I will come back tonight, give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, daylight check in here. I have got the sun to my back. I'll turn around and give you guys a sunlight look in a minute. But uh, so far so good. It's been about a little over two hours at this point. I did touch up my nose once because I've already been blowing my nose. Like crazy town. My allergy medicine hasn't kicked in yet. You know, you have to take it for like a week before it's... And I waited too long and I knew it though wearing braids i was filming my dia my dia box and so it's easier to try on clothes with your hair pulled back but the jones road i think is looking good the nice thing about being able to touch it up on the go is like even though i had a little bit of powder on already it totally took just fine like i feel like you could have a bunch of these like you could stick one of these face pencils in your in your carry-on bag your purse that you carry around you could keep one in your desk drawer auric you could keep them in your vanity in your bathroom like i feel like they're super easy to just like put a little on tap a little out it's all good let me give you guys some sunlight here we are in full sun i think it looks really nice it's very comfortable it feels like nothing really and I think the color match is okay. Need a color match in the, in the shade. I think it's fine, really. There you have it. I will be back tonight. We will find out how this one goes. 8.40 p.m. That puts us right around the eight and a half hour mark. Let's take a look at how the Jones Road face pencil has held up. Let's talk comfort. Very comfortable. Feels like nothing. Feels wonderful. Totally fine. Skin does not feel dry. I don't feel dehydrated. Everything feels fine. In terms of the wear time, I would say, okay, so I, I have had to blow my nose many times. I did stop touching up just to see once I figured out you could touch up. Good to know. So I've lost some coverage on my nose, mainly because I've been blowing my nose. I also got some red lipstick on my chin, as tends to happen when I eat with red lipstick on. So ignore what is wiped off of my chin, because that was me. And otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape. Let's zoom in and take a look at this one. So never mind my chin. Uh, around my nose, the areas that were originally clinging to my flaking skin, still, those edges are still a little accentuated, but nothing worse than it started out, and I do think it's actually a little bit better looking than it was initially. Blush, bronzer, highlight are still intact. I don't see it caking up really anywhere. Even between my eyebrows looks fine. There's no product caking up or moving around. My forehead looks fine. I mean, everything still looks nice and natural and skin-like, but for the most part, coverage has remained intact, except for where I've wiped it off, either blowing my nose or fixing my lipstick off of my chin. So I think the longevity here is really good. Talking about wearing it as concealer, 
I don't think this formula is quite hydrating enough for my under eye area. The rest of my face does not seem dried out and I'm not saying my under eye feels dry, but I think it looks a little bit less hydrated than when I use some of the more like emollient style concealers. So I do think I would in the future stick with this, not as concealer, but just as the rest of my face, like spot concealing. And I would use something designed as an under eye concealer for my under eye concealer. But generally speaking, I'm really happy with this. I really like the format. I think I can definitely see myself having several of them and using it as a touch-up throughout the day, using it for no makeup makeup. I feel like it's a, it's just a really nice product for that sort of a purpose. I like that it comes in a bunch of shades, 25 different shades to choose from. I will probably try to get a couple more shades. The way Bobbi Brown described it is she had, I can't remember the number she used, but I want to say that she said she could see people having, you know, three to five shades of these so that they've got shades for every time of the year and every purpose, whether it's, you know, adding dimension to the face or just seasonal changes in your coloring. And I can totally see that. Like I can, that makes sense to me. It's, it's fairly reasonably priced. You know, you're at a price point that's like barely above drugstore. You know, you can get 18, $19 drugstore foundations. This is 26, so it's like the low, or 25, the low end of prestige pricing. So I, I, I see a place for this. I see this as a pretty unique entry, even though it's not exactly unique, but it just fills a, it fills a void I didn't know I had. So uh, if I had to give a grade to the Jones Road face pencil, I'm gonna go A minus. I do wish I could use it as concealer a little bit more easily. I do think that it's nice that you customize how you wear it based on whether, like if you're oily skin, you wouldn't need to use a moisturizer because your skin would provide enough of that sort of emollient to spread the product easily. But I also see that as a potential downside. You know, it's because it, you're gonna have a learning curve until you figure out the best combination of products to work for your skin. Like I saw the, the face base wasn't quite emollient enough. The Nivea worked pretty well. I'm gonna have to play with it a bit to get to the, the right place with it. But I think once you do, you're probably really gonna like it. Like I think it's, if you work it out to figure out the formula for your skin and your body, I like it. I think it's really smart. I think this is a really smart product. I'm going A minus and I'm probably gonna buy some more shades of this because I think it's kind of brilliant. There you have it. Another episode of Foundation Fest is in the books. If you like foundation reviews, if you wanna see more of them, give me a thumbs up down below. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. What foundations do you think I should buy? I get as many as I can and I buy them whenever I can and I keep a bin full of them. So let me know what you wanna see. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.